Not all is fair in love and war, especially if the war you are waging is against someone with superpowers, and you happen to be non-powered yourself. Welcome back, Nerd Squad. Today we'll be taking a closer look at some fights involving our favorite superheroes and their opponents that were, for one reason or another, unevenly matched and completely unfair. At least, that's how it would appear on paper. Join me in counting down the top 10 most unfair superhero fights. And if you want to learn even more about some seemingly unbalanced fights, be sure to let us know in the comments below below. Okay, now let's get counting. Number 10, Squirrel Girl vs. Doctor Doom. When Squirrel Girl was new on the scene, she was still weirdly proving how OP of a character she was. Although any fight involving Squirrel Girl you would think would be super unfair in terms of her being completely outmatched. And you'd be right about these fights being unfair, but it's usually more often the other way around, with many of her opponents standing no chance against her. One of her first fights happened to go just like that, featuring the brilliant and dangerous Doctor Doom, who found himself quickly trounced by Squirrel Girl when she attacked him with squirrels, leaving him to be pretty much embarrassed about this fight forever onward. Number 9, Captain America vs. The Punisher. This was a very one-sided fight, not only on paper, but also just in terms of how this all went down. Two villains, Goldbug and Plunderer, were willing to join Captain America's side of the fight in Civil War, revealing that even the supervillain community was concerned about what would happen if Iron Man won. They might be villains, but they were people too, and were terrified at the prospect of the nation becoming a police state. Punisher didn't like the idea of working with villains though and shot down their offer by literally gunning them down. This resulted in a pissed off Cap beginning a brutal fight with Frank who refused to fight back because, well, Captain America was one of the good guys? So based on how this fight shook out, I don't know if you'd actually be able to tell. Captain America beats the Punisher within an inch of his life over the course of a handful of panels and also calls him a murderous piece of trash. Wow, that is pretty brutal, Cap. All right, friends, before we move on to this next point, just a quick reminder to give this video a thumbs up if you're enjoying it. It really does help us out here at the channel. Number eight, the Punisher versus Dawkin. In this fight, Punisher once again is brutal defeated by his opponent, though this time a lot more permanently. Punisher ends up being no match for Dawkin, who makes quick work of him despite all his guns. I mean, we already knew this was how it was going to end, didn't we? Considering Dawkin takes after his dad, Logan, and has a pretty intense healing factor. The real impressive thing, though, is just how much of a beating and stabbing Frank withstands before Dawkin inevitably takes the victory. In the end, Dawkin decapitates Frank Castle, killing him. Though Frank, of course, would later come back as the monster Frankencastle, and then later be returned to his old self once again. Number seven, Black Canary versus Superman. Pretty much any Injustice fight against Superman is brutal because of how powerful Superman is known for being, and of course how crazed and evil he is here. Black Canary attempts to take down the big bad Superman in Injustice, and at least she came armed with a gun and a kryptonite bullet to do so. Still, this fight ends how you'd expect it to, with Black Canary being no match for the Man of Steel. Well, almost anyways. She successfully shoots him, taking him out momentarily, but he is then chosen as a Yellow Lantern because of his immense ability to instill fear in others, which honestly I agree. Although she may be taken out by Superman's heat vision right after that with a shot straight to the gut, she does still end up getting a different kind of victory through her defeat. A consolation prize at least. She's wearing contacts that have the ability to record everything she sees, allowing people to see just how much of a brutal tyrant Superman has become, because they broadcast it everywhere. Also, I feel like if you actually put in contacts that had cameras in them, even in the future, even if like the technology was amazing, they still have to be pretty thick. Like, I have a hard enough trouble putting regular contacts in my eyes on days when I have to do that. Number six, Hot Girl versus Barbastos. Granted, this was Nth Metal Enhanced Hot Girl, but still, if you had told me this was how Dark Knight's metal was going to go down, I wouldn't have believed you. In the end, Hot Girl was the one to defeat Barbastos in the comic. Though, of course, that wouldn't be completely where that story would end, as we saw with the continuation in Dark Knight's Death Metal. However brief the fight between Hot Girl and the Bat God was, it was still pretty cool that she was the one who ended up taking him down. Even if it was only because of, well, the Element X Blade 
that she was really able to do this. Barbados is basically a god, so on paper this fight in general just sounds pretty crazy. Number 5, The Punisher versus Wolverine and Spider-Man and Daredevil. Now you might expect you know how this one should go, but let's also remember that this is Garth Ennis writing Punisher, so yeah. It doesn't really go down the way you'd think. Instead, the Punisher manipulates the three heroes briefly into turning against one another when they seek to bring him in. These three are hoping to team up to essentially arrest Punisher and then turn him over to the courts and, you know, get him convicted with like the law and all of that stuff, even though Wolverine needs a bit of convincing when it comes to this approach at the beginning. Punisher takes out all three of these heroes, even managing to disable Spider-Man by convincing him that if he moves, bombs will go off. You'd think Spider-Man would actually be able to sense whether or not this was true, but I digress. I guess his spidey sense wasn't working that well that day. Number 4, Superman vs. Batman. I mean, you'd think you know how this one should shake out, considering Batman is just a normal human with a bunch of money and, well, years of training. However, in Dark Knight Returns, we get to be pleasantly surprised. A normal man, even one as skilled as Bruce Wayne, you'd think would just be no match for Superman, especially as, well, he's getting on in years here, whereas Kal-El, also being older, barely looks or seems to have aged at all. But Batman used uses all of his strategic skills, knowledge, and his gadgets to help him win this fight. And man, does it go to show that you should never dismiss Batman just because he doesn't have conventional superpowers or superpowers at all. Batman has the best superpower, the superpower to know a ton about heroes because he does his homework. Number three, The Punisher vs. Sentry. During Dark Reign, Punisher refuses to stand by and let Norman Osborn become the world's new biggest and brightest hero as S.H.I.E.L.D. is disbanded and Osborn becomes the head of its replacement organization, Hammer, and the new Dark Avengers team. Punisher aims to eliminate Norman Osborn, but standing in his way is the Sentry, who stops the Punisher's bullet mid-air as it soars towards Osborn's head. Sentry sets his sights on Frank, and well, I think you can imagine how this one goes. Still, at least this fight is gratifying in the sense that it isn't over with like a one-two punch. Instead, we actually watch as the Punisher tries everything he can to try to defeat Sentry, knowing it's pretty much all hopeless. But refusing to give up. And he does all this while being brutalized by Robert, who initially just wants to talk it out and arrest Punisher without a fuss. So that's how Punisher is actually able to survive because Sentry just wants to talk. Punisher's skills and weapons aren't what save him actually at the end of the day. He simply manages to get lucky when Robert doesn't call out his get out of jail attempt at bluffing. Thank goodness. Number two, Superman versus Alfred Pennyworth. You would think you already know how this fight would shake out, but hey, it didn't go down quite the way most of us would expect when it happened in Injustice. After Superman broke Batman's back with the good old Bane snap over the knee move, he had a brief moment of regret as Batman called him out for being more monster than hero for torturing him, all while claiming it was for the greater good. As Superman considers what he's just done, he turns to Alfred who has approached him. However, Alfred didn't approach Superman to, you know, communicate any words of wisdom here or to help Clark come back around and like regain his senses and see the error of his ways. He came to teach Superman a lesson about attacking Bruce. Alfred used a pill which temporarily granted him the same level of strength as Superman, making this super uneven fight on paper a lot more even in reality. Using the element of surprise, Alfred was then able to beat Superman to a pulp while confessing that he was very disappointed at him before scooping up Bruce and taking him to safety. Reminding everyone that even when it comes to facing powerful foes like Superman, Alfred is still and will always be a bad in case people forgot. Number one, Squirrel Girl versus Galactus. I freaking love this fight, and I love that I started this list with Squirrel Girl and I'm ending it with her, even though this fight is super ridiculous. You wouldn't think someone like Squirrel Girl, whose powers include communicating with and controlling squirrels and sharp teeth, would be able to take on and even defeat the epic force of Galactus, who is nigh unstoppable and comes armed with the Power Cosmic, which basically allows you to do, well, whatever writers need, whoever wields it to do. Power 
Terra Cosmic, by the way, turns out does help Galactus to communicate in the vacuum of space as well. In the unbeatable Squirrel Girl issue 4, Squirrel Girl defeats Galactus by realizing that the only way to defeat him is by offering him an alternate planet to devour other than Earth. She and Tippy Toe manage to access the databases in his ship's computers and find one that is covered in nuts, which they manage to convince Galactus are delicious and nutritious, full of calories, or I mean, life energy life energy. As strange as this all sounds, the whole issue is pretty great when it comes to writing, so as weird as it sounds that Squirrel Girl was able to beat Galactus, it actually really makes sense in this context. And if you want to find out more about how this all actually happened, that Squirrel Girl beat Galactus, you can check it out in the Unbeatable Squirrel Girl issue for yourself. What are some of the most ridiculous fights you've seen in comics? Which did you think were simply the most unfair to even have been written? Which unmatched foes would you like to see duke it out? Let us know in the comments below. This has been Top 10 Nerd and I'm your host Amanda McKnight reminding you as always to stay nerdy YouTube.